Welcome to 10 with Dr. T, featuring Dr. Matthew Terzella. Brought to you by Piedmont Physical Medicine and Rehabilitation. Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Terzella, and welcome to another edition of 10 with Dr. T. I'm a physical medicine rehabilitation physician practicing in Greenville, South Carolina. And the purpose of today is to talk about a topic um, that some of you may or may not be familiar with. But before I get into it, I'm gonna ask a few questions. Are you double jointed? Do you know anyone who is? Um, Can you do strange party tricks that others cannot explain? Or do you do these things just to gross some of your friends out? Or do you find that you dislocate your joints an abnormal number of times or you tend to sprain your joints more often than the other person? I've heard people telling me all about these things. And if I'm talking about you, you might be what we call hypermobile. Now, the reason I bring this up is that hypermobility is starting to gain a little bit of momentum um, in terms of the media and also in terms of in the health professions as people are becoming more and more aware of it. Um, when I was growing up, I used to remember uh, a colleague or a friend who used to be able to put his, wrap his leg all the way around his neck and everyone would just be grossed out. And now I sit there and think about it and say, well, that probably isn't the right way to do things. And we didn't stop to think about maybe that this was a problem for this uh, young gentleman. I don't know where he is today, but who knows? Maybe he's got some issues at this point. But anyhow... Um, Hypermobility is fairly common, um, and I'm basing this on what I'm seeing in my practice in Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I've noticed that a, a good percentage of my folks have some degree of hypermobility. Now, what I've seen is it tends to be on a spectrum with very little over here and extensive over here. And along that spectrum, there are also symptoms that they have. I have folks who are very flexible with their joints, but they do not complain of any uh, muscle pain. They do not complain of any pain in general. And I have others at the other end of the spectrum who complain of a host of different types of pain, like their joints are constantly hurting, they're constantly dislocating their joints and have it be painful. Um, Some of them just have chronic pain in general. Uh, They fall into the context of fibromyalgia. They also have what we call dysautonomia. They have a lot of uh, dizziness or fainting spells, which can be accompanied with um, some significant forms of hypermobility. Now, when we talk about hypermobility, uh, one of the things that people talk about a lot is Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome. Again, this is garnering a lot more attention in the health professions as well as in the media. Um, People have this image of this person who could twist themselves and do a pretzel, and that's all they think about. But that's really not what it is. I'm not going to get into too much detail about EDS as we go forward, but I just wanted to touch on it because that's what a lot of people think about when they think of hypermobility. just because you have some hypermobility doesn't mean you have EDS. And that is, that is what's been found. Um, they're also looking into uh, genetic factors that play into some forms of hypermobility, EDS in particular. They've isolated several genes uh, for several of the subclasses of EDS. And they've also identified one for the hypermobility variant. Uh, however, it has not been done yet to where they could actually test for it. But I anticipate that coming fairly soon as the technology exists for the other variants as well. But we'll see, we'll see what happens. But I just wanted to touch on that because that seems to be a very common question that I get asked in practice amongst those who are hypermobile, even amongst those who are hypermobile without any real problems. So um, stay tuned for more on that. I will be addressing that more in depth in a future uh, podcast. But for the purposes of today, what is it about hypermobility that really strikes at the heart of people? Uh, for me, uh, what I see with my patients is that it affects them on day-to-day activities, the ones that are um, fairly significant. Um, they'll be walking along, they'll sprain their ankles, they'll dislocate their knees. Some will even dislocate their shoulders and they'll just pop it back in and keep on going. Now, over time, as they get older, this is a problem because they're, all these joints are inherently unstable. Now, what do you think happens if all these joints are inherently unstable? What do the muscles have to do? They have to work twice as hard. Our ligaments, which are the things that tend to be the most loose, some of our cartilaginous or cartilage-based structures in our 
joints. Those are a little bit looser. Those are all what we call our static stabilizers in our body. Static meaning they're not really doing the moving. The muscles are our dynamic stabilizers. They're the ones that do most of the moving and they also help to protect the joints as well. Now think about it, if these static stabilizers or ligamentous structures are loose, the muscles are gonna to have to work twice as hard. And what'll happen is folks who are hypermobile over time, if they don't get it right away, they will start to develop significant spasm and they'll say they're very tight. And it is quite interesting on exam because they'll be able to go like this and pull their, pull their thumb all the way, almost past their wrist, but again, yet they can't, I can't move their hamstring or they can't touch their toes because they're so tight and all the other muscles. And this is a, doesn't make sense to a lot of the folks who's like, well, if I'm so loose, how come I'm so tight? It's because the muscles have to work that much harder to overcome uh, the laxity that's already there. So it's really, really, it's really interesting to see, but it's also interesting to see uh, the looks on my patient's faces when it makes, suddenly makes sense to them. Um, and that's a big, big part of this particular entity. Now, they'll ask me, well, what can I do about it? Specifically, the ones who aren't, don't have that many issues at this point. They tend to be younger and I'll tell them, listen, you have to work out. You have to exercise and build up muscle to help support the joints. And uh, that's invariably the next question I get or the next statement I get is, well, I do yoga. I said, well, I don't want you doing yoga if you can do all the stretches because you go past the point of stretching the muscle and stretching an already stretchy ligament. And that that's not good for you in the long run. So I recommend things like Pilates, which focus more on strengthening and just getting with a, uh, a good physical trainer who understands working with those with hypermobility. Oftentimes I'll send my patients to a good physical therapist to help them develop a home exercise program as well. Cause you need someone who understands what hypermobility it is in order to um, strengthen appropriately. So that is a, that's a really, that's a really significant thing in the care of these folks. Now, as I mentioned before, the things like EDS um, and the chronic pain symptoms and things that go with it, we have a variety of treatments that we do for that. We do some regenerative type injections to help um, tighten up some of those ligaments to give them more support. Um, uh, some other folks we use things like prolotherapy, PRP, which we employ at our office, and some even use some um, regen other regenerative techniques that have some uh, stem cell capability in them as well. And these are all things to help tighten up those supporting structures as best they can. But like I said, not everyone needs it to that extent and they do well with just a basic exercise program to maintain uh, the muscle flexibility while also building muscle strength. So really what can you do if you think you're hypermobile? Well, the first thing is if you're having excessive pain or you're having dizziness and weakness and it's just been completely miserable, which unfortunately a lot of the folks who come to see me experience this, come see a physician, go to your provider and be evaluated, um, pick their brain about things and ask if they can get you to someone who has a bit more knowledge on hypermobility um, because that would serve you uh, greatly and help you in a number of different ways. The second thing that you can do is get on a good workout program like we just talked about. Really try to exercise and build up those muscles um, as best you can. Um, those are the things uh, that'll make the biggest difference moving forward. And the third thing is, I, as a patient, I recommend that you advocate for yourself. If you really feel that there's something going on here and that no one's listening to you or believing you, don't quit. Don't give up. Really advocate and look around and try to find um, a healthcare provider who's willing to listen and to help you. Because a lot of times, and I've seen this in my practice as well, they get funny looks from from their friends and family, and they're saying, "Hey, well, you're fine. You're fine." But they're not. You're not fine, and we we understand that. Or if you see a friend of yours who's having this as well, encourage them to see a physician. Encourage them to advocate for themselves because. Um, doing these simple techniques like building up your muscles and getting to someone who could help tighten up some of these uh, loose joints or give you strategies to better cope with some of the potential pain, it can go a long way. Not in just treating pain that you have, but in preventing uh, future issues down the road. Well, that's all I want to talk about uh, Talk about today for hypermobility. Um, I hope I gave you some clues and again, uh, clues and tips. Uh, in closing again, 
a good exercise program, advocating for yourself and getting to a provider um, to be further evaluated would go a long way. Um, I hope you enjoyed this podcast about hypermobility. Um, if you have any questions about any of the things we talked about here or want to look into more about EDS or hypermobility in general, please go to my website at www.piedmontpmr.com. That's www.piedmontpmr.com. Thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you again in my next podcast. Thanks for listening to 10 with Dr. T. To learn more about resolving your physical pain, visit piedmontpmr.com.